What's up my comic comrades? We all know there were so many iconic cartoons and animated series that came out of the 80s and 90s, and one of them was a series that joined the Disney afternoon in 1994 called Gargoyles. The surprisingly edgy series about medieval gargoyles who find themselves in present day was essentially Disney's response to the popularity of WB's Batman the Animated Series and the like. It was freaking awesome, and if you've never seen it, every episode is available to stream on Disney+. Plus. No, they did not sponsor this episode, it's just that good. Although Disney, we're willing to take your money. Anyway, the creator Greg Wiseman continued to tell Gargoyles stories in comic form from 2006 to 2009. And now he's returned yet again with Dynamite Entertainment to add even more to the Gargoyles mythos. However, this comic series is a direct sequel to the fan-loved animated series from the 90s. Greg Wiseman is a freaking titan in the world of animation. Not only has he created Gargoyles, but he's also created Spectacular Spider-Man, Bonkers, and Young Justice, just to name a few. Sales on this new Gargoyles book have been crazy, but if you're a fan of Gargoyles in any way, you need to start reading the series. Having said that, today we're going to break down the first two issues for you, so let's get into it because I'm excited. The comic starts off with Elisa, the protagonist NYPD detective we all know from Gargoyles, and she's with her partner chasing three men who just robbed some ATMs. With captions of her saying, it's nighttime here in Manhattan, and things always get a little crazy at night. Her partner asks, should I call for backup? She responds, no need. Backup's already here. As we see Goliath and several other Gargoyles we know and love from our childhood swoop in to stop the criminals. As captions from Elisa say, like I said, things always get a little crazy around here at night. Goliath, Broadway, Lexington, and Goliath's daughter Angela make quick work of the thugs. The cops come and arrest the thugs, but one of the officers says to Elisa's partner, I don't get it, detective. You took down all three of these perps by yourself? He replies, Detective Mazza helped, but it's her night off, so I let her breeze. Elisa then breaks down who the gargoyles are, giving us a refresher and or a summary for people who aren't aware. As the caption says, see a few years ago, I caught a case here at the Irie building. You know the place, tallest building in the world, with a big medieval castle as a cherry on top. Anyway, I snuck into investigate a pretty massive public disturbance, and from that point on, my whole life got with the crazy. Still, I guess the story really started back in the Dark Ages. Superstition and the sword ruled, or so I've been told. It was a time of darkness. It was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles. Their clan was frozen in stone by a magic spell for 1,000 years. Now here in Manhattan, the spell is broken and they live again. They are defenders of the night. They are, well, you've got the idea. That's her narration. It literally mimics the open of the show, which is glorious. We then see Elisa meet with Goliath as she says, this is Goliath, the leader of the Manhattan and clan of gargoyles. And okay, yeah, he's kind of my boyfriend. Which we saw develop throughout the Gargoyle series. The book then introduces us to several of the other gargoyles as they come flying in, giving us an introduction slash refresher of who the gargoyles are. Such as Brooklyn, second in command, and Brooklyn's girlfriend, Katana, who we met in Japan. Then you have Brooklyn's rookery brother, Lexington, and Brooklyn and Katana's son, Nashville. There's also Hudson, Goliath's mentor, and Broadway. And lastly, but certainly not least, you got Goliath's daughter, Angela, who Elisa is like sisters with. Elisa then gets a page from her partner, Matt, saying, I better call him back, at which point we're taken to Rikers Island. Elisa tells us a year ago there was a war with gangs in Manhattan, pitting Tony Draken, head of the Draken crime family, against Thomas Broad, a gangster trying to cut in on Draken turf. Her partner just busted them with the help from the gargoyles. Once she calls her partner, he says, Broad's people hit another Draken drug lab. We've got six injured, including a bystander. Elisa says, with their bosses behind bars, the foot soldiers are just trying to fight over the scraps. And they're not the only ones. Elisa asks, are we sure it was Broad's men? Matt replies, pretty sure. I'm currently watching Tony's right-hand man glass and Broad's consigliere, Jack Dane. But I don't have evidence to arrest either. At this point, Coldstone and Coldfire arrive, saying the humans are at war again, and I wonder if we should not allow them to destroy each other. As Elisa tells us, Coldstone and Coldfire. He's a zombie cyborg, and she's a robot. Each harbor a soul of a gargoyle from Goliath's Scottish clan. I realize that sounds pretty complicated, but trust me, it's all you really need to know. Coldfire says, we did our best to mediate the damage, as they reveal the explosion at the lab between the two gangs was because of their interference. They were trying to stop the two gangs, as they tell the rest of the gargoyles, but even with the likes of us as a distraction, they quickly resume their conflict. With cold fire saying, so I ignited a reason to force the separation and truce. Then we fled before the Manhattan authorities could arrive. Coldstone says, I do not like this word fled, nor do I understand why it's acceptable to reveal ourselves to the scum of humanity, and not to the very humans we have sworn to protect. Goliath responds, it is difficult to reconcile, but 1,000 years ago, humans often mistrusted us, even though we were a common sight. Thus, it is hardly surprising when our race has been, until recently, the stuff of legends that they might fear us now. Elisa jumps in saying, honestly, humans haven't even 
learn to get along with each other. Coldstone asks, then why protect them? Goliath says, because the true gargoyle king can no more stop protecting our castle than breathing air, and Castle Manhattan requires our protection. You will not hide from the humans, but we will also give them time to know us, while protecting our castle from all possible danger, so that someday we might live here together in harmony. And in the meantime, let us use our legend to bed evil Manhattan miscreants. If criminals are a suspicious and cowardly lot, that may work to our advantage. Elisa then asks Goliath, are you quoting the Cape Crusader? He responds, I do not believe so. Who is this crusader? Might he be some use to our cause? She says, never mind. Gotta say, I love this moment. We then get a page of Elisa's brother as we get a refresher of her brother Derek Mazza. She breaks down his history saying Derek went to work for an evil megalomaniac who had his own personal mad scientist inject my brother with a potent mutagenic formula comprised of panther, bat, and electric eel DNA, which transformed my brother into the mutate known as Talon. Elisa also tells us that her brother Talon founded an underground community known as the Labyrinth, comprised of mutates, outsiders, and even some gargoyle clones. We also learned that Talon and his partner, Maggie the Cat, are expecting a child, and that's why he paged Elisa to let her know that her niece and or nephew is coming into the world. But we see an outsider from Talon's Labyrinth family walk away to tell someone it's happening. If you plan on taking an interest in the child from birth, you may want to stake your claim sooner than later. As we see its dialogue, the evil clone of Goliath made by Xanatos and Dr. Severius, who says, message received and understood. And for the record, I've already taken an interest in this child. In fact, I intend to adopt him or her to raise as my own. The woman from Talon's group says, adopt? This kid's not exactly an orphan. He says, no, not yet. The comic then ends with Goliath telling his fellow gargoyles, it seems we all require a recharge. The sun rises. We must take our leave until nightfall. Elisa and Goliath say, I'll miss you to one another, as she goes to meet her brand new niece or nephew, with a comic ending, very optimistic, unknown to her and the gargoyles that evil is already at play. And just like that, we jump to issue two. Issue two starts off with narration from Goliath's daughter Angela saying, somehow I can sense it. Sunset approaches here in Manhattan, but until then, we sleep. We sleep and we dream. My name is Angela. I dream of summer nights on the island of Avalon, where I hatched and lived in peace. I dream of my mother in all her rage. I dream of new love, warm and sweet, as we see her kissing Broadway. But all dreams, whether idle or nightmare, come to an end. When the sun retreats below the horizon, we live again, we are gargoyles. As we see her and her father break free of their stone. As nighttime falls, Broadway asks, what have we missed today? Angela replies, Brooklyn and Katana went to check on the rookery before sundown. Perhaps we should see if anything happened down there. If you are unaware, the rookery is a protected area where gargoyle clans lay their eggs until they're ready to hatch. Angela goes on to say, I suppose we have my mother Demona to thank for her long-term goal was to take the castle from Xanatos to lead the clan into a new age of armed gargoyle conflict against the human race. Hence her eventual need for a rookery to safeguard the clan's eggs, though for now we only have the one. Brooklyn and Katana's second child, not due to hatch for another year, currently safeguarded by the clan's gargoyle beast, Bronx and Foodog. Broadway then leans in saying, it's pretty cool to see a gargoyle egg again, as Foodog growls, but Nashville says, hush now, Foo, Broadway is clan. Anyway, after checking on the gargoyle egg, Coldfire arrives, saying, Goliath, Elisa sent word while you slept. He replies, she in need? He says, fear not, brother, she merely wanted you to know. There might still be time to attend the birth of her kin. So of course, they all fly over to see if they can get there before the birth. But when they arrive, they're shocked to see that all of them have been knocked out with some sort of gas. Elsewhere, we see that Dominic Draken, former head of the Draken crime family, who passed on his leader role to his grandson, Tony Draken, is being released from Bellevue Hospital due to his dementia. But you see, he doesn't have dementia. Of course, it's just all a ruse to get him out of the hospital. His granddaughter, Antoinette, is the one who gets him out. And once they're in the limo, he says, I'm getting pretty tired of this crazy old man act, kid. She tells him, the lawyers think it's important, Pop Pop, at which point he basically says, I'm ready to get back to business. Once Goliath is able to wake Elisa up, she tells them what went down, as someone set off some kind of gas that knocked all of them out. So they can clearly steal Maggie and the unborn child, along with her midwife. Once Talon awakes, he says, Maggie is gone, as well as Mary, the midwife. The Gargoyles asks, but who would do this? Elisa asks, who else knew Maggie was having a baby? Broadway answers, the whole clan knew. And Angela says, but none of us would do this. As Coalfire says, no, but there is one other. We are then taken back to Riker's prison where we see Antoinette is meeting with her brother Tony as he asks, how's the old man seem? She says, that was an act, Tony. He's as sharp as ever. I'm worried about what happens when Dino gets out tomorrow. Tony says, the whole city should be worried about that. She asks, what do we do? He says, there's not much I can do from here. But if we can't contain Uncle D, then Manhattan, burn, sister. We are then taken to Maggie and her midknife and see they've been taken by Thalog, which of course us the readers knew as we saw he was coming after them in the first issue. Anyway, we are then taken to Talon and the Gargoyles as we see Talon leading the charge to Xanatos as he thinks he's behind his missing wife and child for good reason. But Xanatos just says, Derek, always good to see you. I understand you're expecting joyful news. Talon responds, you dare mock me? He then grabs Xanatos by the throat saying, tell me where my wife and child are. Tell me now, Xanatos, or I will end you. And with that, 
the issue ends. What can I say, guys? The first two issues were so much fun. Greg Wiseman immediately transported us back to the early 90s and the weekday cartoon we love from our childhood. You really need to read each issue to get the full experience. Whether you're a fan of the animated series or this is your first introduction to the characters, we highly recommend you jump on the series. They do a good job of bringing you up to speed, but as I mentioned earlier, you could also watch the entire original series on Disney+. Plus. Hashtag not sponsored. But now it's over to you. Let us know if you'd like to see us continue covering this series down in the comments. And that's going to bring today's episode to a close. But if you enjoyed this video, check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment. It helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.